So to add some scoring in, um, I have just added an extra shoot there, an extra 40 score points, if you like. Um, you, can, you can add as many as you like or change the numbers. You can change this graphic, of course. You can do that in any graphic manipulation software you choose. Um, doesn't really matter. But we do already do have a, a keeping score actor. There he is, which we can drag in and appropriately resize. And that's already been set up for us. So even if you were to change the, the look of that scoring actor, the attributes, uh, you can keep the same and just copy them across for your own game. Um, so, so that'll keep score for us. So that's pretty easy. So now all I have to do is for these actors inside the game, the instant actors, is to create a rule that says when the ball collides with this actor, uh, the score will, will go up by, by 10. So that's quite easy to do. We can just grab the collide, the collision, and say when this actor tie collides with the ball, something's going to happen. We're going to change the game attribute. So let's go there, use the change attribute, change the game attribute, attribute, game attribute, whoops, make it quickly. Game attribute of score to the game attribute of score, in this case, plus 10. So game attribute score to game attribute score plus 10. When this actor collides or overlaps or collides with the ball. For this actor here, you would make the game score go up by 40 and up by 40, but as I say, you can change that by changing uh, your, you know, yourself. You can mess around with that. Just a little test. I'm going to cheat on this game and just drop the ball through the chute. We went up by 10, so at least it works. Um, and that's all about. That's all it is. So I need to apply that same attribute 40 to that one and 40 to that one, and we can keep score. I've added in the scoring rule to these other ones as well. Um, I've just added in the game score change attribute to 40 rather than 10. I also added in a play sound attribute, so it'll make a little noise when it scores. Um, the easiest way to do that would be to copy and paste that rule across to each of those scorers. Um, and you may also like, I was just having a look here under the layers. At the moment the balls kind of pass behind those scoring actors and really should pass in front so you can grab the actors here under the layers tab um, and perhaps move them up to the top so that actually they go there we go move them up a bit at least so they just they'll just go in front of the scores really and that'll work quite well so the, 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 the next thing to do here is that right now the game will keep playing um, forever. So we want to make these uh, a bit of a counter on these balls so we can tell when three balls or three goes have taken place. Um, so to do that, I'm going to create an actor. Um, well, I, there we go. Already There's the one I created earlier. Um, create, create a new actor and call it uh, game counter wall or call it you know, counter wall or something like that. Um, the idea of this actor is we're going to position it at the bottom here of the screen and maybe up the side as well so that when the, a ball comes in contact with it, we're going to make it count to three, basically. Count down from three. And when it counts down from three, it'll go to the game over screen. So create a new actor, plus actor, call it game counter wall, don't need to do anything else with it. Um, and then we need to add some attributes to it. So we're going to create another game attribute to do that. So under the game attributes here, plus uh, a new integer, because it's a number, it's counting down. Um, call it balls left. Create a new integer. Then we have three balls, so obviously set it to, to three. If you wanted to add more ball actors, and, and you'd have to increase this integer as well. Uh, back to the actor. So now we want to add the, that collision one. Basically, it's the same as the so collision. When it's actor type, again, where is it? There it is, the ball. 
We're going to change the attribute. Now that we've created a new attribute, now we can change it. So let's look for it. Attribute, ga whoops, game attribute. Balls left to attribute, game attribute, balls left minus one. We then need to make it move, of course. So new attribute rule to make it flick screens. So the rule will say that if this new attribute, game attribute, balls left, is equal to zero, what's it going to do? Well, it's going to change the scene, isn't it? Back to that game over scene. Change scene to the game over scene. And we probably want to, you can add a sound in there too. We should probably play a sound. Uh, and we can play a sound, you can choose, whoop, I hate it when it flips like that, play a sound, whatever you like. Now let's grab this actor and drag it in. Um, oops, got to be on actors. Grab the actor, drag it in. Let's position him. We're going to put it, I'm just going to slide that backstage down a little bit. We're going to put it just out of picture. So we can't see it, but it'll still be in play. And perhaps grab another one just to put up the side here in case we get any uh, balls that escape and go off the side. And then that should actually work. Let's give it a play. and see how we go. You can of course completely cheat at the moment and just drop the ball straight down. There we go. That's a pretty simple game. Interesting, isn't it? I haven't got a reset. 